Hey y'all and welcome back to another video by Umbra's Darkness. In today's video, you guys, we have something a little bit different on the channel. Uh, we're making a video for the free-to-play, light spender, uh, casual player, maybe casual alliance, um, as to why they should go and join this event. It's a question that I've been asked a lot today, and it's a question I was actually asked in DMs probably two, maybe three days ago by Karma, and reminded of by Captain today. This video should have came out then two, three days ago. Um, and I apologize for that. By the time that this video is posted, you have 18 hours to make your decision. And I hope you choose to go. With that, you guys, let's get into it. First off and foremost, uh, do I think that casual players, free-to-play players, an entire casual alliance should be in this event? Yes. Yes, I do. And I would like to bring up my points why. First and foremost, the... Uh, matchmaking period is the very first thing that I think should kind of like show you why. Uh, the matchmaking period is supposed to be based off of power and in other Q&As that I've covered in this channel. Uh, it also is supposed to be based off of player number. So if you are an entire casual alliance, uh, so like no whales, no like super overpowered players, you probably don't have as many players, maybe like 50 to 60. Um, and you're probably kicking the inactives before you join the event. So, uh, and then you're also not high in power, right? Most hills are probably like 10 mil, 11 mil at most. Uh, some even maybe four or five mil, right? Uh, so your player number is, is supposed to be prioritized. So that way everyone has about the same amount of clay to be played with. Uh, and then your power level is supposed to be prioritized after that. Uh, so that way you're finding people within the same power range as you. Uh, so I do genuinely believe that the matchmaking period should be better than like Alliance Expedition because your matchmaking period is four days because it is in their interest just as much as it is in your interest for this event to go over well and for everyone to enjoy it for 45 days. So that's like the first thing, the first reason that I think that everyone should join is the matchmaking period should protect you. The second reason that I think everyone should join is that the rewards are free to play friendly. Um, well, yes, there's a pay to win aspect of like the season special ants, right? And you can like spend money here, the free to play, the casual player, uh, you know, a casual player might pick up this $10 pack once or twice and have a chance at hatching those orange, uh, those special ants, the free to play player, the casual Alliance, can still hunt insects, right? If we look at how to gain Lost Island fruit, activity points, hunting insects, hunting lizards, geckos are just slightly stronger lizards, not very, and gathering, right? All things that free-to-play, light spenders, casual players can do. And you're guaranteeing four bio essence, you're guaranteeing one exotic shell additional a week, right? The bio essence are instead of Alliance Expedition, um, but in Alliance Expedition, it's three or four. And if you're in a casual alliance as a whole, you're probably not getting as many people to show up and not winning as often as uh, you will be able to here and get the solid four, right? Um, so that's another plus, right? The, so the rewards, uh, on top of those rewards, uh, an event just came out today that will benefit free to play light spenders and the pay to win players, sure. But the free to play light spenders have another chance to earn Lost Island eggs, right? You get 20 chests times two because it lasts for two days. So you get 40 chests. Um, so maybe grab an extra two eggs from this event <laughs> in order to be able to hatch. Um, as you can see, it resets every day. So you, you do get a chance at 40 orange or 40 chests to potentially hatch another couple of eggs. Um, also, as explained in my video yesterday, uh, everyone that has double rewards unlocked, right? You have to have double rewards unlocked, will be able to hatch a hundred eggs. So you'll be able to guarantee at least one special ant, one of the new cool special ants uh, just for playing in the event. So that's cool too, right? Uh, you do get at least a guaranteed copy of a random special ant. Um, the next aspect for like the casual player, so that's like a lot aimed towards the free to play and casual, um, 
if you're like the only casual or you're like one of the few casual players in your alliance and you have like a bunch of whales or stuff like that, this video is also for you. Um, you've been in that alliance, right? You've been there. You're a part of that alliance, not because you're a spender, not because people think you're a burden. You're there because of your personality. You're there because of what you bring to the team, right? Don't go in and think that you're going to weigh them down or things like that. Um, you're going to be an asset, right? Even if you're not online because you're a casual player, you're probably still coming on every day to at least get 180 activity points, therefore getting you clay, right? Um, maybe you're on for some layer hits, right? Uh, even someone with T1s, right? Which you can hit with T7s, T8s, it doesn't matter. March speed doesn't change. The, no matter what, time, what speed or troop you use, March speed doesn't change. But even if you had only T1s, you can remove durability from a layer, right? Um, so because you can remove durability from a layer no matter what, it really doesn't matter. Um, it, it doesn't matter what, what power level you are if you feel like you're surrounded by whales and stuff like that. Uh, on that note, power level, right? Complete casual alliance, complete free-to-play alliance, or casual player... Um, season special ants are higher stats than anything else. Uh, yes, they came out with an update. T10 soldier users will be able to make the season special ants slightly stronger. Sure, they've spent lots of money on the game. Makes sense. Doesn't matter. There's like 10 of them in the entire game. Chances are that as a free-to-play casual alliance, free-to-play player, you're going to go up against them. Not high. You know, they're going to be in the ultra high end bracket with high power levels, alliances, things like that, right? Um, so you're basically almost insured to go against only alliances and only members that have just the regular season soldier ants. And there's no difference from you to them on those soldier ants, right? Uh, so <laughs> eventually the playing field is evened out a little bit. You're not doing T7s versus T9s anymore. You're using seasoned soldier ants versus seasoned soldier ants. Um, and that's gated, right? That That's not going to be one alliance is going to get them all in two days and all of a sudden they're just marching around everyone. No one can use them until that event unlocks, right? So you have one day here, two days here, one day here, one day here, two days here. We don't know how long here and we don't know how long. And that's when seasoned soldier ants unlock. People can't even get to your territory for the first week, right? We're up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven until this one unlocks. And people can't get through tunnels until this one unlocks. So over seven days before people can even get into your territories. So you have a, a while to get like achievements to build up season soldier and stuff like that. Uh, and you have a while to work towards season uh, achievements of like defeating stationed troops inside of fortresses, defeating durability, right? You have over a week to work towards that, right? Um, now, let's say everything I'm saying, you know, makes sense, you guys agree, you sign up and like worst case happens, right? You're an alliance of 50, you're like 500 mil power total, you're 1B power total, and you get matched up against uh, 5B power, 6B power, everyone has T10s, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, however extreme and significant and lopsided you want to make this comparison, right? Um, there's an Alliance Blockhouse. The Alliance Blockhouse provides an outline right here uh, that covers an area for your Alliance to go into, and opponents can't hit it. You can't. You can't hit people from there, and you can't be hit while you're in there. You can still send out to hunt insects. You can still send out to gather. You can still do all of the things in order to still constantly compete against strongest war zone in order to constantly do those things. So even worst case scenario, you're still able to work towards free-to-play items and free-to-play things. Uh, well, in the event, even if you get the most lopsided 
hyper like impossible in my mind, right? I cannot see that happening, that type of lineup happening. But even if you get it, you can literally be in here and you don't even have to bubble, right? They can't hit you in here. So it's like a permanent bubble being in here. Um, and you get to do SVS, you get to do all of those things and you don't have to worry about anything. Um, so, and then the last thing for like my free to play casual players uh, that goes back to like registration and things like that. Uh, you do get a season chat after uh, the matchmaking period ends. So after the matchmaking period ends and once selection period starts, that's when our season chat became available. And you can set up discords, you can talk to people, see what their expectations are, right? Are they going hyper competitive, things like that. You can't leave the alliance at that point. But you can at least go into there knowing like what type of strategies you're you're gonna want, um, and you know I'm gonna be doing videos that based off of you know where where your alliance sits on the power level, where uh, you are, and what your hopes are for the expectations, uh, where you want to be on this map, right? Because there's different locations, right? Uh, there's different locations on this map for every type of alliance that is better than another type, right? Um, while there's, uh, some align, some people feel that there should only be one best place. I think that the, uh, argument can be made for almost any of them based off of what your alliance wants to bring to the table. Um, so that's, that's another aspect, right? Uh, is for that, uh, that you can find a, a, a location, a starting location that'll work advantageously towards what your alliance goals are compared to the rest of them and you'll get a feel for them and you'll understand how the it's going to go and prepare for that uh then on the pace of uh, all of these events and everything unlocking right and now you've talked to people you understand where you're going to go you've like selected based off of videos i'm going to make based off of whatever and you have this selection period and you've made an alliance, right? The competition page. I made a video yesterday talking about resources and resources are a huge issue. Um, but they're a huge issue because we're, in some people's minds, we're the most competitive of the most competitive, at least power wise, right? Alliances in the first 50 servers. We're the most dedicated to getting online because we got one of the first 80 slots. We have the highest power and we have the highest activity level. Um, does that mean that we're the most competitive? I don't think so, but according to the game developers, it does, right? And because of that, right, these eight alliances competing, we're blowing through these milestones, right? Every milestone that I've reviewed on live or on a video, right, We've been maxed out before it even starts, right? Except for the first one, right? And this monster hunter, right? But we've we've been maxed out relatively quickly in the first hour or two of it unlocking, if not before it unlocks. Um, and that's because we're hyper competitive. If your power level is lower, right? Overall lower, everyone, right? Because this is based off of season zone, not just one alliance, season zone. So all eight alliances working together is going to go slower. It's going to be a slower paced game. That means your resource consumption is going to be less. So you're not going to have to worry about that balance um, as like an alliance. And it means that uh, you're, you're not going to feel the pressure, right? Because well, there was no pressure for us to get these things. You're not going to feel pressured like you need to absolutely get these things well beforehand. As Sleepy pointed out, and like I was like, no, that's not possible. That's not how it is. That's because that's my mindset, right? I I want to be as competitive as possible. I want to go for it, right? I'm not a high spender, but I am a, a hyper aggressive player, right? I want to be aggressive. I want to go for it. I want to do my best, right? As a casual player, as someone like that, uh, and, and then a group that's going to be there, um, these these milestones will kind of ensure, okay, everyone has season special ants. The tunnels on, don't unlock, so that way you have over a week of safe zone. So everyone's gonna get season special ants at the same time, trying to like time gate us, keep power relatively even and stuff like that. So I truly believe that it should be a relatively fair and balanced game. 
again, we still have Doomsday option that I described before. Um, and huge shout out to Sleepy for uh, putting that mindset in me and having me maul over it for, you know, almost a day. Because when I first read it, I was like, absolutely not. That's not a thing. But it could be. It could be a possibility if you're, you know, on the lower power end, if you're on a more casu- in a more casual uh, Lost Island group. Definitely could be. The last thing, and this goes for more than just like my casual play group, more than my free to play play group. Uh, this goes to everyone. I'm not going anywhere. Just because Lost Island starts, just because uh, the next thing happens, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, my Discord's not going anywhere. It's not my Discord. It's not uh, that one Discord. It's not UD's Discord. It's not Umbro's Discord. It's the community's Discord. This community has developed into its own thing, and I'm just blessed to be able to offer it to you guys. Um, there are people on here that want to teach. There are people on here that want to give examples. There are people on there that uh, need to remind me. Uh Right. I literally forgot that there was a tutorial at the beginning of this event and they're like, brother, it, it's there. It, it, you literally did it. And it's like, oh, yeah. Right. There's people that are willing to teach strategies when I haven't even made a video about it because they've played other games about it. Right. They're willing to go more in depth than my video does in order to get you guys to understand the community is not going anywhere. It's not magically gone just because the event starts right we're gonna be here to help as many people as you we can the community wants the game to succeed and they want the community to succeed so if you're not in here if that's not your thing yet consider it maybe not you maybe mention it to your r4 r5 hey can you just join this in case you have questions hey can you just join this in case there's something put out sooner rather than later hey can you just join this and ask about, you know, this one thing, right? Or, hey, can I, like, just join it and ask that one thing and leave again. I'm not going to be hurt. I But I'd rather you ask your questions, get your doubts, get your concerns, get your strategies, right? The community is really good. There's relatively few trolls. I don't, I think there's like two. And we have almost three people in our server, right? So I think we're doing pretty good. Um, but it's there for you. It's, it's an, a tool that'll be as good as you allow it to be. And I hope you allow it to make your game great for you. All right, you guys, that's my opinion. That's my free-to-play stance. That's my light spend p- stance. That's my casual stance. That's my entire casual line stance. That's my 50 farms going into the game stance. I think you should do it. I hope my points have brought up valid reasoning. I hope my doomsday idea has brought up a way that you guys feel it's going to be possible no matter what. I hope that my Discord allows you to play a better game. Even if not for this event, even if you're past server 500, even if you choose not to do this event, I hope my Discord makes your day brighter. Even if it's not in this game, the off topic, the memes, something. Music sharing. I hope it makes you smile. That's all I want. Is for everyone to walk away at the end of the day watching a video smiling. With that, you guys, I got to thank my Patreon for making me smile. Because of them, uh, I got the SM7B microphone, and I got the GoXLR uh, amplifier. Y'all, when I started this on, like, a bet from my wife or whatever it was, a dare, I never imagined it would go this far. And I never thought I'd be holding $1,000 worth of vocal equipment in my hands. Um, that's because of the Patreon, you know, I spent some of my own money on it, but the Patreon paid for a lot of it too. Um, and thank you, you guys for doing that. Right. Um, I've been saving for the last six months to figure out a place to invest like the right, my funds for the right, right idea to improve the channel. And, you know, I think the background noise is the most distracting. I got a camera, I got a light, I got a green screen. But the sound quality and the background noise is the most distracting. And because of the Patreon, because of the subscribers, you know, the, you, the viewers, the community, uh, liking, commenting, sharing my videos, uh, I've saved up enough money between everyone to be able to do this. Um, so thank you. It means a lot to me. 
that everyone cares this much to help me this way. Um, yeah. Of the Patreon, I really want to call out uh, three people. Fox and Trina. Uh, as much as I'm supposed to be teaching them, uh, they teach me. Uh, they're from server 475, so they're not in the event. But uh, they have accounts in there, and they're teaching me. They're asking questions. They're breaking my brain nonstop. Uh, huge shout out to Slim. He's currently in there. He's actually in the group that my account is in. Um, I talked about him last video too. They're doing tests. They're willing to share. They're willing to show their knowledge. Um, and I think that kind of just sets the precedence of what the community is about, um, which is sharing knowledge, being a willingness to share. There's plenty of people that wouldn't be willing to do what Slim does. Uh, so huge shout out to him too. Uh, thanks y'all. I hope this video is for you. If it is and the Patreon's not, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing this video. It literally helps me buy things for this channel. That's what I use my funds on. Until next time, y'all, you can find me in the YouTube comments. You can catch me in the Discord. Or, worst case scenario, you can catch me on server 260 or server 7. Until next time, y'all, stay humble, stay happy, stay hungry. Bye, y'all.